this place has been saving lives longer than it realized. If it wasn't for St. John's, I don't know where I would be, uh, quite honestly, and I don't know that I would be here. Uh, and, uh, don't mean in Raleigh, I, I don't know that I'd be alive today. Because I was in such turmoil when I came to this place looking. Um, I couldn't find peace. Um, nothing I did brought about the happiness and that, that nothing filled that void that was left. Uh, when, when everything I knew, church related, uh, and spiritual community really got snatched away from me. So if it wasn't for St. John's, I'm not sure I'd be alive today. That's terribly hard to admit. But I honestly don't know that that's my understanding. It, it became very evident to me how God was working in and through this church to connect with me years before I ever knew this church existed. Um, so I told you I was looking for churches. I still didn't put all these dots together. I didn't put these dots together until several years after I'd been here. Uh, but but uh, the very first drag show I ever saw was Taj Mahal at Legends Nightclub. Um, and she came out performing the gospel. And I remember one, I was just scared to death because of this little closeted gay boy from Fairmont, North Carolina, coming to the big city and going out to a gay bar. And so I'm scared to death of what's going to happen going to, to that place and uh, thinking, well, Lord have mercy, what do I do if people see me here? Um, it didn't help that the folks I came with put me in a blue sequiny shirt, so I was very noticeable across the room. But this, this drag queen comes out, Taj Mahal, performing a gospel number that I have heard so many times. It's sung in the choir with my church uh, when I was growing up. Um, and in the moment, it scared me. I was like, oh gosh, this is a sign. <laughs> um, but as I thought on that for years, I thought back to that and, and, and got to see her again perform and, and desperately wanted to see her perform again after that. Because it started to, to open up my mind, that, that night, my mind started to be opened up to the fact that here's this person taking God to the very place I thought I was running from God to, uh, the very last place I expected to find God. Um, and here it was, she, she's bringing her ministry to the stage in a nightclub, in a gay club, uh, sharing with people that God's here, God loves you. Um, and that was powerful as I started to think about that over time and, and, and over the next few years. And I had the, uh, the, the moment where I just broke down and it all came together is when I finally realized, uh, and it was at, in her death that I realized this, that she was the, uh, one of the choir directors here at St. John's all those years ago, probably back in 2000, uh, when I saw her perform. And she was there as a ministry of St. John's or a part of the ministry of St. John's, sharing God wherever she went with whoever she met, letting them know that it was okay to be who God called and created you to be. Um, and to realize how much, how God was using this church to minister somebody who had never walked through the doors of this church, uh, and how God was using the people of this church to reach out to people. So, that's my, my St. John's story, what my most memorable moment of St. John's is, although it happened long before I came to St. John's. Um, it just has always spoke to me, and y'all hear me often say uh, that we need to be all of who God called and created us to be. Maybe Brendan used that as well, I can't remember. Uh, but when I think back to Taj Mahal and I think of what she was doing, she was being everything that God called and created her to be to the people around her, and she inspired me. In, in what she did then and, and inspires me still today through that story uh, and through you know, that experience that she allowed me to have. And I'm just one person. I think of the thousands of people that were transformed because of her work um, that never made it through the doors, that never touched those door handles, but, but their lives were transformed and blessed. When I moved to Raleigh, I, it, it was probably 2004 or 2005, um, I was working and I had been out of church for a number of years at that point. Uh, and before that, I'd been in Wilmington and had been out of church for a number of years and um, desperately felt uh, uh, an emptiness because I didn't have that. That was an important part of, of connection for me. Uh, but I didn't have that and didn't realize I could have that. So I was, you know, I, I went to different churches and nothing ever felt right because I couldn't be me. 
I had to change who I was to be able to fit in uh, and to match the mold there. Um, and so it was a long, tedious process. Um, and I experienced the same nervousness I think all of us do when I first came to St. John's. I you know, finally found, uh, heard about it. I don't even know how I heard about it at, at that point, what caused me to, to try it. Um, but it, it was you know, nerve wracking to come in the doors of the church because you build yourself up so many times just to be let down because the, the, the space isn't welcome. It's not going to be a place that will allow you and encourage you to, to, to be yourself. Um, and so I, I was lost. I was wandering around and trying to figure out life. Uh, I, I, I was doing well professionally and, and, and moving along there, but there was just this huge emptiness because I didn't have a church community, a faith community that I could connect with. Um, and so yeah, that was, it was a rough time before I got here. Once I got here, it felt like home. The, 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 the welcome that I felt when I got here let me know that you know, there's something different about this place. This, this is going to be a different experience. I do remember when I got here, uh, that, that there was this huge welcome. Uh, folks just invited you and welcomed you in uh, with loving arms. They, they, they were hugging people, uh, a, a very loving community. Um, and then the diversity of people that were here was absolutely profound for me because I'd never been to church that was that diverse. There was a, that diverse of a group of people. I had, you know, growing up in the, the rural south, I had gone to churches primarily growing up that were all white. Um, I had grown, gone to churches that were all uh, Native Americans, uh, and I'd gone to churches that were all black people. But I'd never gone to a church that, that had that uh, grouping of people mixed together. Uh, and, and so it was you know, really amazing to be able to go into a space and to, to see this worship take place. And there was people from all walks of life there. What kept me coming back was the diversity. Uh, because I, I remember later on as I, I became a deacon and I would get a chance to stand in the, the back of the, the sanctuary and, and help out with various parts of worship, uh, looking across the sanctuary and seeing the diversity of people that were there and remembering, uh, thinking this is what heaven looks like. This is, this is what heaven has to look like. To see this grouping of people coming together from all walks of life and worshiping together and loving on one another. Um, so I keep coming back, I kept coming back, and I still keep coming back because of, of, of the love and, and I think this is what heaven looks like. I think this is our slice of heaven on earth, if you will. Um, and, and I think that this church has a passion. It started out with a passion and has continued that passion to serve people, to be here, to be of service to the community around them, uh, just as it was to me when I first got here. Uh, and as it still is today, and I think about the work that we do and the work that I get to do as pastor. Um, and I, I've, I've shared this with you before, but I feel selfish a lot of times because I, I, I think about the work that I get to do and, I, and how much I'm growing and getting out of it. And I look at the growth that's happening within my own self and my own spiritual journey. Um, and I think, wow, am I here for other people or am I here because I needed to grow a little bit and, and needed to, to be transformed? Um, so it's beautiful and, and, and it's opened my mind up to be able to see in actuality being lived out how we truly grow together. Uh, that, that none of us has you know, got all the answers, none of us is going to be the, the, the all-knowing. Um, we get to come together and do this thing together, get to make mistakes together, laugh together, cry together. Um, but we grow through it all and we build this, this community. Uh, and continue to build that community. And that's what's so amazing and why I keep coming back. This is my family, this is home. And it's the people, it, it's the community. We talk about community and communities in our name, um, but, but it's the people and, and, and their passion. Um, when we've talked about different things that have taken place, when, when a hurricane came through and we needed to, to open up the space to create safe shelter uh, or space for people to come and charge phones and that sort of thing, you reached out and you said, hey, this is something we've got to do. And we just did it. We didn't stop and get around the table and start pulling out calculators and figuring out how we were going to make it work. We just went with it. We, we said, this has to happen. This is something we know that God is telling us to do. And we did it. And the, the resources came. 
few years later, you know, the, the, the whole situation came up during COVID was our white flag emergency shelter. Same thing. Willie and I were in the lobby. We realized there was no place to be within four hours. We opened up an emergency shelter in the sanctuary. Constantly, this church, the people here, the, the, the church is the people, but the, the, the people constantly look for ways to be community, to be God, uh, or to, to be the reflections and, and feet and hands of God that Jesus to, to go out and do the work that God has, God has called us to do, to, to live out that mission, um, to ignite and, and activate the God within us to go out and be for the world who we're called to be. Um, so yeah, there's countless stories of times where it's like, you know, Fred with lunch boxes of love and birthing that ministry and making sure the folks had, had uh, things to eat. Vivian, when she realized somebody was coming here and the only thing they were going to eat that day was whatever was available here and, and all it was was a cookie that day and thereafter there was hot meals that were birthed out of that to make sure that nobody ever left the place hungry. Um, and it's, it, it, it's this, this notion of looking at the person and meeting the need, not looking at team stereotypes, not looking at helping just this group of people or that group of people, but looking to help people in general, anybody that comes to the doors and needs help, we're here. We might not be able to fix everything. We might not be able to, you know, as the old saying goes, we not, yeah, might not be able to turn your lights back on, but we'll sit in the dark with you. We'll make sure that you're doing this in community with people and not doing it by yourself. When I became the pastor of the church, um, uh, just you know, or just over four years ago now, um, the the door handles were a, a gift. Uh, they came from the building on Glenwood Avenue. They were saved and preserved. Uh, I don't know what the intent behind them was when they removed them because I don't think they knew at that time that I would become the pastor. It wasn't for another you know, you know several years before that would happen. Uh, but they removed those door handles from there and, and they presented them to me uh, during my ordination service here. Uh, as I became the pastor of this church. Uh, if you notice, the door handles are, are quite worn, so you can see where they've been used. They were on the, the doors of the church. Uh, and the person that gave them to me in the church as it gave me those door handles uh, told me, and it's inscribed on there, that thousands of hands have touched these doors and opened these door handles, entering this space looking for a place of hope. And it asked me to remember when I see these door handles that my hands touch those handles at one time coming in looking for that place of hope. And it reminds me that, that yes, I did. I touched those same door handles, opening that space to come in. And, to, and I was desperate, hungry, looking for a place of hope. And I found it when I got here. So they're a reminder, they, they, they stay in my office uh, and have since my, my installation here as pastor, uh, to remind me every single time that I'm in this office, when I get ready to go back out uh, of this office into the, the church space, that I came here looking for hope. And every one of the people that I meet when I walk out that door are coming in here looking for hope. Now, when we look at, at how we measure a win, if we want to call it that, but, but how do we know if we're doing the right thing and doing well? Um, it's when we see that we're, we're, we're having an impact in people's lives and a transformation in people's lives. And if that's happening in five people's lives, that's amazing. So you know, I'd rather see that, see a true transformation happening in five people's lives and see an attendance number of 500. The biggest thing that I've seen in growth uh, for myself uh, is just my, my expanding my understanding of who and what God is. Um, I think coming from a very uh, Southern traditionalist mindset, very conservative church background, um, there wasn't a lot of freedom of thought. There was a lot of yeah, here's the doctrine, here's the, the structure, this is how you have to do it, this is what you have to believe. There wasn't a, a lot of option to explore and figure things out. Um, and being liberated to be able to do that uh, is absolutely um, transforming in and of itself because we get a chance to, to dig deeper and get to know more about who God is. Uh, I would think that the biggest thing, if I could sum it up in just a couple of words of, of the growth I have seen, and this happened fairly early on after coming here, is starting to look for ways, and I, I, I say it happened early on after getting here, but it continues to expand every day, um, and I'm challenged in it every day, but getting to a place where I'm, I'm 
looking for and seeing the God in everybody that I meet. Seeing God represented and, and spirituality represented in every single person around us. Uh, because I think for so many years, so many and so much of our lives, we, we spend uh, demonizing people and, and uh, or at least just judging people. If we don't, if we don't demonize them, we judge them and put them in boxes. Um, and we fail to see all the representations of God around us when we do that. Um, certainly, we, we don't. All, we're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes, and we're going to do things that, that aren't nice or, or aren't the best things in the world. Um, but at the core of it, we can still see our heart and still see the God living in us. Um, so I've been challenged to be opened up to see that. Uh, the very core of my theology was challenged <laughs> coming um, as I've grown and, and being able to understand something much different. Uh, a God of love, a God of inclusion, a God that, that wants the best for us. Not a God that's going to rain down hellfire and brimstone or going to turn you into a pillar of salt or, or cause plagues to come against you. Um, so just understanding a very different God than, than I grew up understanding or, or grew up really hating and fearing. Um, and that's powerful to say. When we were at Pride this year, uh, downtown Raleigh, a, a lady came up to me and she said, your church saved my life. She doesn't attend the church now. She hasn't been here since I've been here. Um, but she came to me and she told me, she said, I, when I found it, I was going through a time in my life that I wouldn't be here for that. I your church and I want to thank you for y'all continuing to be here. And so that's the, 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 when we get back to looking at the impacts we have on people's lives, that's the true measure. Of what, you know, that's why we're here. And it's not about going out and counting numbers. It's not about doing those things. It's about the fact that we showed up. And I think about, you know, she, she shared that story. There are so many other people that that's one of the joys of being a pastor that I get to hear these stories from people that just reach out. I had somebody that called me last night after the uh, news story aired that talked about how the church had, uh, they'd been a member here, a regular attender here years ago, and how the church had transformed their life. And they were seeing it now on the news and what work it was doing today. And they were so, and they won't come back and those things. You get to hear those stories of people, and then I look at that this year, um, and the ways that we're out in the community and show it, just showing up. Um, normally we do one Pride event a year, and this year we're done, we've done eight. Uh, so that's eight different public events we've been in, not to mention all the other things we're doing, where people are getting a chance to actually see that there's a church, that there, there's a place. For me, I was looking for a church, and I didn't have that many places to go. I didn't know where to look. I didn't know, and I don't even, actually back then, I don't think the LGBT Center of Raleigh existed. There wasn't a center, so I didn't know where to go to look for, for a church that would accept me for Ryan. Now we've got some more of those resources. We've got a lot of work yet to do. Um, but hopefully life can be a little bit better for people uh, because of places like St. John's and people that, that have lived those experiences and know the value able to be present for others. So that that poor young dumb country kid from Fairmont, North Carolina will know when he grows up that he can be who he is uh, and know that God's going to love him the same. And not, not even that God's going to love him the same, God's going to love him more because he's able to be who God called and created him to be and not have to hide parts of who he is. Parts of who God created him to be, that's the bigger difference is knowing that it's not just uh, about accepting us for who we are. God created us as who we are. That's a huge difference.